the money to go to the next shop. And so again, my I started paying him eighty dollars a week in two thousand and one. And then when I left eight years later, I think I had gotten up to like a hundred and fifty dollars a week. Mm-hmm. So I was really low ball balling him. Um he never I mean he he really looked out for me and I really shouldn't have come at him. I think I should have challenged him mm-hmm. and just told him this is what I want and wanted more. But I really I was out for blood on him. I was like, You fine. <laughs> 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 I'm rolling up. I'm on my way. I'm fuck some shit up. Um, and then when I had to go to the next place in a pinch, like literally like two, three days, I had to come up with five hundred dollars as a deposit to go to the next shop. Mm. And I did not have it. And I'm like, so where am I gonna work? <laughs> <laughs> Can't go commission. I'd be damned if I go commission. I, I'm not for those commission shots. 50, 50, 60, 60, 40, 70, 30. I don't, no, no, no. Because when you go commission, they dictate your schedule. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be off when I wanted to be off. I wanted to come in when I wanted to come in. And I definitely did not want to come in at nine o'clock on a Saturday or 12 o'clock and work late evening. I wanted to come in at four and five a.m. That was my thing. Mm-hmm. So, I asked my mom, of all people, for the $500. And she gave it to me. She didn't give me a speech. <laughs> but she gave me the money. I spent that entire week. I think I gave her that money back in three days. Wow. And she was like, you didn't have to. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Here you go. <laughs> uh, you no, no, no. Um, so then, you know, I, that was in Eastgate Shopping Center. So I was there for a while. Got married. Had a kid. Even had my knucklehead boyfriend as my apprentice at the shop. <laughs> trying to help. Trying to be super saver nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth. Fuck that. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm telling the truth. I was out here trying to save him. And I did what for you while you was in there? And he shampooed and catered to the clients. And they was loving on him more than they was loving on me at a point. Um, but he he was there with me. Um, I, I, I remember having to go to state board because he got his own personal stuff, his rap sheet. And so when you got charges, you got stuff going on, you got to go sit in front of the state board of cosmetology. Mm-hmm. And I went up there with him because I was his sponsor and he was going to do the apprenticeship under me. And um, we go up there, we wait in the line, we sit around, we finally get our turn. And Philip, I, I, I bring up his name because that was a connect that I needed. And I'm, I'm still trying to figure out that connect the years later. <laughs> <laughs> you started off this story so strong with, with your concentration and determination and you, you can't figure out the simple thing. It's just, really? it's, it's the math English thing all over again. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, it was a panel of four. They asked them questions, you know, tell me a little bit about your background, the charges, da 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 da. He did get the apprentice license. Um, he got that license. He definitely did that because I pushed him to do that. It wasn't something that he wanted to do. Um, but he, he was my first apprentice. I had him in there early in the morning, rolling up mannequins and putting color in putting relaxes in and the only thing he wasn't doing is curling the clients because he just was not touching my clients. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he definitely was shampooing for them and whatever. And um that connect one of the panelists, Dr. Uh, was he the doctor? Or was it just the Mr. Mr. Uh, Maza, he worked at the jail 
And uh, well, he worked alongside the jail in Upper Marlboro, and he ran the um the barbershop program in the jail. I wanted all parts of it. I wanted to be in that jail teaching. I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to teach. You know, people that um wanted to do hair and like really, you know, because some people, you know, you go to jail, you get in the programs, you get in the programs to show face so that you can get out. Now, whether or not you actually use the skill when you get out, that's a whole nother thing. But I really thought that I was going to be able to go in there and encourage. I never got that chance. Um, the barber, the barber side flourished in that, mm-hmm. but the hair side did. And I think I emailed him probably twice in my career and asked him like, Hey, what's going Cause he told me, he said, just email me, ask me and I'll let you know. And I did email him twice in my career and he, he was like, no, they, they've cut the program. I think they were like only teaching the ladies nails or something, but hair never, it never flourished in the jail. I don't, and I, I, in my mind, I wanted to find out how to flourish that, but I never knew what to do, who to call, how to do it, blah, 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 blah. So that just kind of fell under the water. Um, but yeah, I, in this shop, he stops me and my apprentice. He goes, gets whatever job he gets. And, um, we get married, eventually down the line, we have a kid and, um, I leave that shop because the owner told me I couldn't bring her to the shop. Okay. And so, but the girl, the ladies there, they really rallied for me. They were like, you know, we don't mind. So the, I'm a little late in the game and probably one of the youngest that was in, cause this is now a sweet situation. It's, mm-hmm separate suite. So before I was running the back of a barber shop and it was the barbers in the front of me and I was in the back by myself. But now it's suites. And so I have somebody on all sides of me. And it's I think it was like 19 suites in there. I'm not sure. It was probably more. Um but he told me I had to leave because I couldn't bring my child. And I had never said I was gonna put her in daycare. Um you know, that young, I, I want, I wanted to wait till she was two and she can go, so she can talk and she can walk in the door. Um, that was, that was my plan. And, um, he told me I had to leave. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm leaving. But where the hell am I going? <laughs> That's crazy. Where am I going? Where am I going? And so, um, the dude that I worked with at Clemont so he had a place right behind um where I was up by um in Lima. And um he was starting to do sweets. He had like four sweets in there and was offering me one. And I went in there and um it it was good. The suite was nice, it was huge. And I wasn't I don't think I did a year there. Um, I was looking for opportunities, other opportunities while I was there. And at that time, I was looking to get out of PG County. At this point, I'm like, I want to, I, I got a child. I'm trying to figure out how can I as a stylist make more money? Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like, if I want to make more money, I'm either going to have to play the PG County game and do... The we I'm not a big weave person. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm either have to do that game, the weaving, the lace fronts. It, you know, if that's what you do, that's what you do. But it just wasn't for me. Um, and I just wasn't feeling it. I I got tired of people coming into the shop asking me, well, why do you charge so much? Um, and Shay Shay and them down the street charge twenty. Why are you charging sixty? And I'm like. It, Listen, it is, it is what it is. I'm just, you can go check check in. Um, and so I had driven, I don't, I guess we were always in Crofton. And so I had driven through Crofton and I saw the sign, solar salons, solar salons, and they were building it out. So I watched it. I kept watching it. I would drive by, watch them pull it all together. And, um, then I noticed, I guess I took a break, uh, like a month break from coming out here looking at it. And then when I came out here, there were people working in there. And I'm like, oh, people working in there. So I I went in there and spied on them like three times. I would walk <laughs> around 
you know, just trying to see who work in there, what's, you know, how it works. Cause I'm coming from a sweet situation and I, the owner was trash. So, um, I was like, I wanted to get the vibe, the vibe of the people. So I, w- I would talk to some of the girls in there. It was very diverse, you know, white women, Spanish, black, more white. Mm-hmm. But I felt like that's, that, that was the next move. That was the next move. Let's, we got to get out here with, you know, some different folks. You got to learn different things. This is where the money is. And, um, I finally called because I was kind of fed up with Lorenzo. It just, I get what he's trying to do, but it just wasn't what I was trying to do. And so I knew that I didn't have any longevity at his shop. Um, cause I just was looking for something different. And so I went to Sola and, um, did the walkthrough with the lady. She did the tour with me, told me what was what. And now the rent was the same, mm-hmm. but the, the pos- <laughs> here we go <laughs> with the deposits and the this and the that. Wow. And it's a whole nother game. So. I, we, we pay the deposit and I get in there. Clients helping me move. They're like, you need my truck. <laughs> <laughs> you need my truck. I'm helping. Clients helping me move, man. They, uh, everybody helping me move. Get me in the shop. Set me up. So I get in there. Um, no issues. Everything's good. Um, culture is good, but this is a, this is a, this is a culture, a shop culture where people kind of really mind their business and people are really into their craft. Like they are zoomed in, Mm -hmm. no tunnel, tunnel vision. Okay. So very different where I'm coming from is people always in your room chatting, you know, Hey girl, people come and selling you anything you need to get from barbershop. (laughs) <laughs> okay. It's it's a bunch of entrepreneurs in there. <laughs> Anything. They want, you want a jet? Go to the barber shop. They can sell you one. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, That's true so though. This culture is different. This is, we working, we learning, we teaching, we are building, we are, um, you know, we are, this is a profession. This isn't me just bumping and curling. This is a profession. Um, I've seen it done, you know, differently on, you know, on, on this side. So I, I'm a, I'm a spy in my night job. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I started looking up each suite because I, and I got to know what they doing, what they charging, what they, you know, what's, what's the, com- not the competition per se, but what am I dealing with? What kind of people I'm dealing with? Yeah. I'm checking out price lists and everything. And out there's one guy, he's not there anymore, but, um, he just did color. White guy. And, um, I look at his prices and I said, I can turn his computer off, man. I can't even afford to talk to him. Wow. He's charging. For a head of highlight, highlights and a toner, he's charging like three fifty four hundred dollars. And he had clientele. You know how much I'm charging for highlights and a toner? I'm charging like fifty bucks. What in the what? So, and he had clients out the wazoo. Um, I had to I had to change up. Everything I have ever learned to figure out how this, how, how is this white man doing this? Okay. So he, um, I just started changing the prices little by little. Okay. Um, taking more classes, um, asking questions to the fellow stylists that was there. Um, one thing about my time in PG County, with us black folks, we are definitely crabs in a barrel. Mm-hmm. Um, I started doing photography and makeup when I was in um, PG County at the second shop. 
and I was setting up for a photo shoot for a client. I had another another um thing I wanted to check off my list, and that was get my work in a magazine. I'll get back to that story. Don't oh. forget to ask me about that. Okay. <laughs> And there was a photographer. There are known photographers in the area that come and take, they have photo sessions and they come to the shops and give you their cards to, to photograph your work. You use them and you use their makeup artists. And so this particular photographer came around to the suites that I was in and he saw me setting up my equipment. He said, Hey, he was just trying to, you know, sell his, well, he was doing the photography. Mm-hmm. But I was, you know, in the photography, I had taken classes at PG. And I said, oh, he said, oh, you already setting up for one. He was like, oh, you a hairstylist and oh, you just do pure. I said, nah, you know, I took some classes and I just wanted to learn how to photograph my work professionally. Um, and I said, you, um, you have any tips for me? Is my lighting right? Do you, what do you think about my camera and what do you think about my setup? Because the space was small. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have really the proper space, but I made it work. And he said, oh, I can't help you. I was like, well, he was like, no, you're the competition. Wow. Dude, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm so, now, listen, now you could have said that if you was a stylist, but you're a photographer. I'm just learning. I took a couple of glasses. I didn't get the damn two-year degree on it. So, I'm dibbling and dabbling. He said, I can't help you. You're the competition. I said, okay. Cool. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Out here, if you ask any of those women or men in the shop, any for assistance, help, hey, I got an idea or I have a client that wants this and I'm not sure. They will go, you know, heaven and earth to help you. Just different. The culture is different. And so I started inching my prices up little by little by little. And so now I can, I ain't charging no $350, $400, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can safely say I can charge between $100 and $200 for some color. And, you know, I'm giving you that professional work that I did not know I could give you when I was working um in the other suites in PG County. So this was this was definitely the move for me. It's the atmosphere I want to be in. I want to always be in a, a learning environment. Um this is where I want to raise my child. Um because it's just different. I want her to I want her to be around and I want to be around people that are forever teaching us and you know teaching them and learning from them. Um, I don't want to be in an environment where, you know, people just never, I just felt like no one was involving. Me. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, people always just, why you got charged so much? They don't, some, some girl that in the one suite in PG County, she had a sign in her window that she was on, on Wednesdays and Thursdays or something. She was charging $25 for wrapping curls and sets. Now, mind you, I'm charging like 55 and so this lady comes to me. This clearly this young lady is too busy because she got twenty five dollar hairdos, mm-hmm. and so she can't take the walk in. And so the lady comes to me and like, oh, can I get my hair done? I'm like, oh yeah, sure. I got, I got some. I think I got an hour. And she's like, oh, how much is it going to be? I said, oh, fifty five. And she's like, oh, oh no, no, she's charging twenty five. Something, something, something. Okay. Well, you are very welcome. To go to that young lady and um, pay what you feel you want to pay. Um, so you you can't you can't do it. no. We are not negotiating. I am not a negotiator. I am a hairstylist. So, <laughs> and that's when I was. That's when I'm just like I gotta get out. I gotta get out. I gotta. I can't. I have. I always, I always tell people if you're in business for yourself, one thing you have to have is confidence. You have to have confidence in your pricing. If somebody is talking to you about the product that you're trying to sell to them and they ask you how much it costs after you like gave your spill about the product or the service and you you did the presentation of the service or product to a T and then when it comes around to talk about pricing, you're like, uh, well, um, you know, 
Um, let me let me crunch the numbers for you. So, so no. Mm. How much you charge for a blowout? Sixty five. How much you charge for weed? Two hundred to two hundred fifty dollars. How much you charge for this? I you should roll it out like that. Be very confident in what you're charging. Be very confident in your business because if you put one um, one o, oh, one anything, that person hears it. And they're now going to negotiate, try to negotiate with you because they know that you're not confident and you're not sure about your pricing. And so if, anytime somebody, and I tell them now, I'm like, just go to the website. Everything's on the website. I ain't talk. Listen, go to the website, truevisionhairstudio.com. <laughs> <laughs> look. <laughs> um, look, you know, look at whatever, look at the pricing. Everything's there. If you have any questions, you can call me about it. The minute we start doing a negotiation thing, we shutting it down. I'm not doing it. I have a family to feed. You don't go to your boss talking about, hey, boss, can you pay me this, that, and the third? Your boss don't come to you talking about, well, can I cut your check in half this week? Because, you know, hmm. something, something, something. So show the same respect to, you know, business owners. You know, we got, we have, I'm not living this lavish lifestyle or whatever. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm living comfortable. And, um, I work hard to get these things or, you know, do what I do. So, um, I feel like, you know, I should be respected in that regard when I tell you the price. You have the option to say no and, um, go somewhere else. But, um, the next person was going to come in and sit in my chair. I, you know, as a professional, you know, if you call Roto Rooter to come out and snake your drain, there's no price negotiation. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You you paying for somebody who's providing you with quality service, years and experience, and a license to go along with it. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's no negotiation. You don't go into McDonald's and be like, "Man, I know that Big Mac five dollars, but can I give you two fifty? Exactly. We gotta stop. <laughs> start treating our businesses. We have to stop treating our businesses like we on the block. Mm-hmm. You can't, you go to your little dope man, man, I got, I mean, I know it's a nickel bag, man, but you know, I got this four dollars. No, five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never lie. You, you gotta stop doing this to yourself. We have to stop doing this to ourselves. We gotta stop doing it. We will never, I hate to see a black business go down. And then when you get to the root of it, they always undercut themselves. Well, I mean, it wasn't selling at $50. So, I mean, I had to cut it to 30 No, somebody will purchase it at the rate that you want. Somebody. And you have to just sell it really good. You have to also figure out what is it that you're given that's going to make people want to spend it with you. And so the, the I think the reason that I've survived so long and I've seen stylists come and go, I always say November 1st is the Super Bowl for, <laughs> I don't know how many stylists agree with this, but I'm for myself. November 1st starts the Super Bowl in here. Mm-hmm. Holiday party, holidays, family coming into town. That's when all the kids come in and all the, you know, got to get a little shake, shake their head done and stuff. You know, they, they don't bring the kids to the shop all year. But November 1st is when it pops off. I am so busy from November 1st to January 1st. It's ridiculous. And I always say, if you make it to November 1st, you've made the whole year. So, uh, New Year's is my favorite holiday. Um, New Year's is my favorite holiday because I like a fresh start. I like that I finished something the year and I like the fresh start of the year. Um, com- you know, the completion, completion and the, the, a new start. Um, and so to me, November 1st to January 1st is, is, is the hair Super Bowl. You just book them busy, book them busy. Um, and what sells it for me, what keeps me going is I offer something that most don't. I set my alarm to wake up at 2 a.m. and I get to the shop at 4 a.m. First, 
person in the chair. Well, actually, I get there at 345. <laughs> hmm. Wow. First person in the chair at 4 a.m. Um, I'm up. They're in. They're out. Um, while all the other stylists are sleeping, I'm doing somebody's hair. Um, I'm, I'm providing something that another stylist is not going to provide because when you think of your local barbershop, when you think of your local salon, you think of, man, I want to get my head done, man. She the bomb. She the bomb. And then you're like, man, but I'm going to be in there all night. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be in there all day. I'm going to have to wait. Um, uh, my appointment's at 5 p.m., but I didn't get in the chairs at 8 o'clock. Um, and that's, I listen to all of that. I hear all of that and I act on it. I, I will, I will not be late. I will not hold you. I'm not holding you hostage by shampooing your hair and putting you under the dryer and then getting to you four hours later. No, I'm going to, if I tell you it's an hour, it's an hour. Um, so that's, that's my claim to fame. Now I can do hair. I can do hair real good, but my claim to fame in it is getting you started early. And getting you out and not holding you hostage to the salon. So I, I, I really feel that's how I've made it. I'm very dependable. Um, I've had clients that'll come in at four and then they go right to BWI to get on the plane to for a business trip. Um, they probably would never try with another stylist because they're like, they ain't be there, but they know I will be there. Mm-hmm. I'm not missing a beat. Um, so you just got to find your niche in your business that sets you apart from um, everyone everybody else. else that kind of, you know, takes it to the next level. So that's why I can charge a little bit more. That's why I can do a little bit more. Um, I don't have to be, a, I'm not, a, I don't feel like I'm a slave to the shop um, working all night or whatever. um trying to make the money. The, the clients want me and I, I am very appreciative of um, people wanting my business, wanting my service. Um, and just helping, you know, listen, these clients, they, 20 years, these clients have seen it all. And they have been in my lives and done some tremendous things for me. So, you know, I would never hold you hostage and, you know, not show up to your appointment. And I'm just tired, girl. Look, look, I'm tired. I don't want to work. I would never, no, no, no. I, I work hard to get up for them. They, they are the bread and butter. They run the business. Um, and you, you have to learn that the guy at the, um, that owned the second shop I was in the suites, he, he said out of his mouth, we needed him. I'm like, we pay the rent. We need you to have the business, but you need us to pay the rent. This isn't a, we need you. This is, we, we need each other. Mm-hmm. So you got to know that you, I need my clients and clearly my clients need me. So, <laughs> so how did uh, the quarantine affect your business? So the quor- the quarantine, the first week I was just in the bed. Like, I cannot believe I'm not doing it. I, I was so, I was just depressed. Like, I cannot believe I'm not doing here. I can't believe, um, a part of me was like, damn, I picked the one career. (laughs) 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 You know, that whole guilt trip crap. I picked the one career. My ass ain't essential. Shit. I'm at home and I, I never thought it was going to turn into two months. Like that it should, oh, it's amazing two months. And, um, after like a week of just like, what the hell am I about to do? Um, you got to turn that, you got to turn that brain on. You got to get up, you got to get up every day. Like you going into the shop. And I just was, you know, the first thing I did, I put a donation button on the um website. On the website. Boom. Client what? These clients are amazing. I'm telling you, 
My clients love me. Three hundred dollars, hundred dollars, four hundred dollars. I ain't even doing no hair. I'm just sitting in the house. But they are funneling money into my business. I ain't done nothing. I sat on FaceTime with clients, walking them through doing their hair. Girl, I can't. Girl, thank you so much. I'm going to donate some. I get on it. The service would have been like 70 bucks. You put in 150 on the donation. I, it's, it was amazing. Um, I, You know, we were still able to pay all of our bills. Um, the, the clients, man, they... They really, really looked out, man. They really, really looked out. That is how I survive. Um, it, you, you know, cl- closed mouths don't get fed. That is a true statement. Mm-hmm. Because if I would have kept my lips closed and didn't say anything, I, I wouldn't have got the donations. But I put it up there and people donate. I push product. Um, I am an Olaplex certified. Um, Stylist, so I definitely push the product. It's, that is um, a product I believe in, and um, clients were, you know, I got to shampoo my hair. It's been two months. They were buying the product, um, still donating. I was getting in the car, Brooklyn in the tow, <laughs> riding around, dropping off boxes because I was like, I don't want to spend the money on shipping. So, <laughs> 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 listen, I need all the money. <laughs> We that's, that's real though. <laughs> that's real. Listen, I can't I can't pay the five dollars, the eight dollars for shipping right now. Um let me drive this out. I drove out to one client in Upper Marlboro, man. She lives so damn deep in Upper Marlboro, I didn't even know it existed. All I saw was woods. Uh-huh. Um I think it took me like 45, 50 minutes to get out there. She got her package. So. Wow. That's like almost a quarter <laughs> tank of gas. So you got to hustle. You got to have, you know, the hustle. Um, And people are watching. People are watching. They want to know how you, um, how you, how you keep it going. You know, people were calling, you good? You good? I'm like, I'm I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm hustling. I'm thinking. I'm learning. I, you know, I um, was at home. My mom is at home. My brother's at home working. And, I remember asking, hey, do we got a desk around? Do we got a desk around the house? I need a desk in my room. And, you know, they're like, well, what you need a desk for? You, you're not working. Mm-hmm. And listen, I work all the time. I, I'm always working. Believe that. So, um, you know, that, that was a little jab to my feelings, you know? Mm-hmm. But, um, I can show you better than I can tell you. So, you know, when you think I'm not moving, I'm not shaking, I, I was out here moving and shaking. I was literally pounding the pavement, picking up products, shipping products, coming to the house, um, sending out product. I'm in the car. I'm the Uber driver for the the business. True vision Uber driver. <laughs> you fly on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I, you know, they, they, they say you're supposed to learn, you're supposed to learn a skill in this quarantine. And, um, definitely I had to learn the skill of salesmanship because I'm not a seller. I am a service provider. Mm-hmm. I don't sell, I don't force my clients to buy a product. I let the work speak for it. So if you want to buy it, you buy it. If you don't, my feelings not hurt, but I had to sell some product. And, um, you know, the product and the donations, people, you know, gift cards, you gotta, gotta swing your business. I saw so many people not getting their just dues. They, barbers sitting at home, barbers going into people's homes, cutting hair. We got a whole virus out here killing people. Why are you in somebody's house? I saw somebody cutting on the side. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What is <laughs> <laughs> Sit, go, listen. I get it. We all got bills to pay. We all got kids to take care of. We got a family to support. I really understand it. But if you dead and gone, it's all for nothing. 
there was a barber that died, man. He was house to house, you know, people in his house, he in everybody's house, and he died. He died. I don't know what he needed this money for. I I don't know him. He was from some state, not Maryland, but he literally died because he got sick, cutting hair, not you know protecting himself, not mm-hmm. quar- quarantining, and he died of coronavirus. And so when the question comes up, um, okay, guys, salons, barbershops, you can now open to do essential workers. Lydia will be at home still talking to y'all on FaceTime. Hey, girl, yeah, curl it that way. Break it that way. <laughs> it right. I was not going in. I had a couple people challenge me on it saying, uh, well, you can just come to my house. No. One, you, my husband works at a nursing home slash retirement facility. You, is it that serious to you? It's not. He, you, I don't know what he's bringing home to me, and I don't know what he's gonna bring home that I'm gonna bring to your house. Uh-huh. So, no. As bad, ooh, as bad as I wanted to pack up that car, cause I did bring supplies home. Cause in my mind, early on, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go to people's house and do hair. But when people started dying, no, no, it wasn't worth it. Um, and then the thought of me taking somebody to somebody's house, and they get sick, it just sickened me. So I was, that was just no. Um, but also I took advantage of, um, the resources. I'm a stickler for following the rules and doing things right. Um, you know, filing your taxes. I made it a point to get my taxes done because I felt like I needed that to stand on. Um, and I did. Um, and just having every, you know, my eyes dotted and my T's crossed. Cause I was able to get unemployment and, you know, 1099ers, we don't get unemployment. We don't pay into unemployment. We just do what we do. Mm-hmm. But I was able to tap into that. I was able to get the PPP loan. Um, and when I got that, you have to turn off the unemployment. Um, and so my, my business loss um, money, but on paper, I didn't lose money because what I got from unemployment and PPP, it just gave me those, that two months of money that I would have made back. And that was, that was great. Um, you know, I just, you got, you got to run your business as a business. Um, I, I, I finished out some projects. I, I LLC my business out. Um, I've been working under a sole proprietorship my whole career and because it hasn't affected me ever I just never when I went to the Maryland site to do the business thing I had did it five years ago when I started at Solar but I never paid the money to do it and never you know entertained it again as I was sitting home I went ahead and paid the $190 got my LLC opened up my business banking at Navy Federal um, and really really sprung to put my business on the map is so I wanted I was listening to a stylist and she says she separated herself from her business so it's Lydia and it's True Vision Mm -hmm. and I've always operated as I am True Vision (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, but I see the importance of separating the two Um, my business is one entity and I'm the person Lydia (laughs) <laughs> and so that that was really important. That was a goal I accomplished. Um, a gazillion Zoom classes. Oh my gosh. Oh my. How many freaking Zoom classes can one take? <laughs> <laughs> I sat on Zoom classes all day long. Um, I tried to do the social media. Let me show y'all me curling Brooklyn's hair and let me, what do y'all want to learn today? And, yeah, that won't for me. I'm not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that. I, I I I find you very interesting right now, and I'm pretty sure my listeners will too. Don't don't uh. Everyone doesn't know how to work social media to their strong suit. So 
I feel you on that. But, you know, it's different strokes with different folks. And now I learned a lot from it. I, you know, I was on Instagram scrolling through, you know, uh, following people, taking their classes and stuff and learned a lot. So I had a lot of little meetings, just talking business, listening. Mm-hmm. Um, also feeling like one of a kind because... It was a fear in the industry. It's a, it's a fear in the beauty industry. Like, we about to go. There was a lot of Zoom meetings leading up to going back to work, back to the salon. And it was a fear. Like, man, what we got to do? We got to, you know, we haven't been working. We haven't been getting any money. How are we going to buy the PPE? The PPE has gone up. So before we had went home, before the virus had really hit, I had started buying disposable towels. The drop, the washer and dryer game in the salon is just crazy. So I was like, I don't have time. I need to be able to just go. I, and it, it gives me time back with the client. So I started doing disposable towels and disposable, um, capes. So I was personally a good place. I found a great, um, place in Maryland, um, that does it and, um, that sells them, I should say. And when it's time to go back to work and I'm trying to re up. Man, prices are doubling, quadrupling. I'm like, how in the hell am I going to re-up the shop? Like, everything has gone up. Can't find no toilet paper, paper towels, up, nothing. Gloves for the salon? No go. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, was, it was a frenzy. It was a mess. But I was able to purchase as much as I could so that I could start and protect the clients at the same time. Um, that was very important. It's actually mandated. Um, we go and in the conversations, you know, one of the, the points in the conversations, little meetings that I was, um, listening in on, people were like, how am I going to do one client at a time? And how am I going to this? Oh my gosh, my business. Da, 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 da. This, I know why he does one client at a time. And I'm thinking, I do. <laughs> <laughs> So my whole business model is on giving the one client their personal time. So I'm like, oh, I'm good. Um, so I sat through maybe five of those meetings and that was like the same conversation in each meeting. It eventually, if it didn't start that way, it ended that way. And, you know, stylists were just in a frenzy, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, oh, oh, I can't, I'm not going to be able to survive. People, you know, stylists quitting the business, closing up the shop, shutting their doors, turning the keys to their suites. Um, and I'm like, I'm ready to go back. I'm ready. Like, you want me to do one client at a time? You want me to clean this? You want me to do this? I'm ready. I've already been doing it. Mm-hmm. Anytime you come into the shop, one any client will tell you, did she go with that bleach? Did she go? <laughs> <laughs> Mike. So... I, it was nothing to, you know, it's the thing was getting it, getting the product to do it. It was never like actually doing the work, you know, wiping down, doing one client at a time, scheduling and making sure, um, you, you know, when one client was leaving, one was coming in. That's, I've been doing that for 20 freaking years. Mm-hmm. This is not new. So, um, I had to tap out of those conversations, um, because all I saw, all I heard was, excuses and when I tried to chime in on some of the conversations um about some of the things that I was doing to go back and hey you know just trying to be uplifting like hey you know you can do it you can do one client at a time like I'm just letting them know like I've spent 20 years doing one client at a time I don't double book you know any of that and so um and I make I make pretty good money doing that so I'm like yes you can do it you can do it you can do it you can also um, and doing that, you can charge more. People will pay you for your time. If they know, it's a piece of my thing. If they know that they can come in and it's just you and them and they're getting a service and they don't have to share you, people will pay you for that. You can, whatever you want. Put, what's, what's the number? If they know they can just get you and they don't have to spend hours I have clients that will tell the new clients that will say, I'm never coming on a Saturday. I don't want to get stuck in there on a Saturday. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, it's not like that here, but okay. Um, 
And then once they fill me out, they'll start booking on Saturdays because they know I'm only going to, you know, keep them for however long the service is. Um, and so everybody's always amazed, like, oh my gosh, I got there. It was no way. I'm always ready for my clients. Always. <laughs> hmm. So I, I hate to hear that other, other stylists, barbers, you know, nail techs, they don't get it. You, you have give the clients that I see, the new clients when they're new to me, that is the first complaint. They hate sitting in the shop. They hate waiting. They have made the appointment. Give them the time that they schedule and send them on their way. You will never, I need my clients to come back. I don't need them to be a one timer. I don't want, I, I, I see it and I hear it all the time. They go to the shop. Oh man, Shay Shay hooked me up. I ain't going back there, man. It took her 10 hours to be my hand. <laughs> but Shay Shay is bomb, man. I can't go back there. Um, and I don't want that. I don't want you to not come back. I need you. Hey, Siri, turn off. Thanks, Siri. <laughs> um, I need my, I need my clients. So I need to give them something to make them want to come back. And that's what it is. You got to change up th- this whole, and I get it. The barbershop and the salons are the neighborhood place. You hang out, you chit chat. You, you can do it in an hour, people. You can, you can cut up. I promise you, you can cut up. We cut up. We have wine glasses. We have wine openers. People bring wine by. We eat. We cut up. We laugh to our head. I mean, and you only get an hour and a half of my time. <laughs> it, it works. I just change, change your thinking. Quarantine should have changed everybody's thinking. You know, how can I do business better? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please repeat it? No, Siri. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I- Everyone wants your attention, and I see why. It, without <laughs> without you even saying it, you, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be the only person that picked up something from you, and that's you know providing people with quality service that demands um, you know respect and authority on on both sides of the table. You providing quality service and quality products at the same time and you expect them to be timely to be respectful and you know yeah so i I honestly i believe i think that you should have like tutorials or class on just business practices opposed to not only the skills and services you provide i think that a lot of people could benefit from you on that but will they listen i need you to listen and follow through with it I mean, you if you put it out to 100 people, 25 might actually pick up on what you say. 50 will take notes, but it'll probably be 10 actually dedicated people that will hit you up and say, hey, I need to hear more. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's that's what you focus on. Mm-hmm. You know, just like you, you focus on one client on the time, you take that same practice to everything else that you do. Mm-hmm. You know, so let me ask you this. What's... Uh, What's one thing you miss uh, that's not available now that, that the world's not open? <laughs> I miss my friends. Mm-hmm. I miss going out to eat. I am a restaurant connoisseur. <laughs> 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 I love good food. But another thing that I've, I've had to learn is I've had to learn to cook. I am not a cook man. <laughs> I'm just not. <laughs> I could follow a recipe, man. Man, I could follow a recipe and it could look just like the picture. It could, man, it's bomb. But, um, I, I enjoy cooking now. Um, I've had friends over that I've cooked for and I, I definitely enjoy that. Um, because I miss being with my friends. I hate that our, the family, our families are divided, you know, um, people that can't see their parents. Jesus Christ. I can't, I can't imagine. Um, 
So that's what I miss. I miss going out, um, chopping it up. But um, we, I, I do try to create um, an atmosphere in my home to do that without um, having to go out. And I feel like even when the world opens all the way up, I feel like I've given myself the tools to create an atmosphere that I would have done out in public. I can just bring it to my home. Y'all want to, y'all want pasta? Let me make, let me, <laughs> let me get that pasta roller make going. Let me make you some fresh pasta, homemade pasta. Um, that's what I miss. I, I miss being out. Um, I, I miss my daughter going to school and going to her competitions and stuff. Um, she asks me all the time, Mommy, when are we going to competition? Oh, Mom, because I think now we might not be able to be in the arena when they perform. I'm going to miss hollering her name. Brooklyn! Brooklyn! <laughs> every video, every video starts to say, Brooklyn! Brooklyn! <laughs> and she, so she would tell me, Mommy, I don't like what you do. <laughs> and I would tell her, I pay for this. <laughs> gonna hear my name. They here to see you, but they gonna hear me. Yeah, they gonna hear me. <laughs> and uh, she said when they told her the other day, "Well, your parents, you know, they might not be able to be there, or whatever." She says, "You're not gonna be saying my name." Oh, now you want me to be there saying your name? Um, so I, I miss that. Um, like I said, New Year's is my favorite holiday, so usually. Me and Patrick will get a hotel room and we end up attending a party in a hotel room. I mean, in a hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't get to do that this year, but we were still chill. Um, we still enjoyed ourselves. You know, the quietness that, um, Brooklyn was at my mom's. We still enjoyed ourselves. I definitely, um, I stayed up, brought the new year in with my wine. And, um, but I do miss. Going out because I, I, I worked so hard during the year and, um, my reward to myself is cutting up on the years. That's my reward. Um, so that's why it's my favorite holiday and I miss traveling. Um, we didn't do a family trip this year. It, we had like three trips planned. We didn't do any of them. So that's hard. I, you know, I, I really, you know, miss traveling. Brooklyn's like, well, we're not getting on the airplane this year. Nope. We ain't getting on one next year either. So <laughs> <laughs> where uh where we uh, one of the places you y'all, y'all was gonna go? So my mom has um so my grandmother passed on a few years back and she only has two siblings. They're twins left in England. And so we were planning a trip to visit them. Um, and then we were going to do the whole European tour type of thing, you know, trying to map out, getting from London. My mom wanted to do like France and Italy, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so just trying to map it out, that would have been our June trip, but, um, London might not even let us in. So, (laughs) yeah, no time soon. Um, then family reunion in Florida, I think, and back to Disney for Brooklyn. Um, that didn't happen. Um, I don't know. I like, I like traveling. So since I've had her and I have, I have three step kids, bonus kids, mm-hmm. bonus girls. Um, but you know, when you have your own, it is different. And I can't fake on that. It is very different when it's your own and you call all the shots. Um, I like to work hard and play hard. So I like to um gather my pennies together and get us out of town and chill and like really live. And I just I missed that this year. We just in the house, twiddling thumbs. Mommy, 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 mommy. <laughs> zoom, 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 zoom school. It's difficult. <laughs> so who who gets on your nerves more? Your your husband or your kids? Not a fair question, Patrick. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. I mean, you said it's not fair, but Patrick, Patrick. Okay. I mean, if that's the way you feel, that's the way you feel. I know. Okay. I do it. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing know how to put that. It it happens and that's like you say, it's a part of life. So, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, who you got in the versus battle? Uh-oh. Rare Essence or Junkyard? <laughs> Is that real? Is that real? Is it real? That's the thing? I'm, I'm just asking the question. No, it hasn't been presented yet, but... Man. Who you, who you got coming out on top? JY, man. JY? JY. Shut it down with the lights off. Mm-mm. J-Y. J-Y. J-Y-B. <laughs> J-Y-B. I, I would love to go to a go-go. I don't even go to go-go's no more, but just to get the hell out of the house. Just go to I, Howard listen, Theater. <laughs> listen, I do not dibble and dabble in the go-go scene no more. And trust me, I've had my fair share. But if this to get me out the house, if you need one <laughs> corona night for me, <laughs> can I get a backyard show? <laughs> Man, you ain't never lied about that. I'll even I'll even go to the mad chef, you know. Yeah, anything. Say hey, anything, please. Jesus, can get the ice box open? Is the business wow. Cause Lord have mercy. Anything, some type of normalcy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Where else is a JY? <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> All right. So, last question I got for you: What would you rather have, a million dollars cash or a fifty credit score? Or a fifty credit score? Mm-hmm. Um. Well, I mean. If I had the million dollars cash, <laughs> I could pay off the debt to create the 850 score. <laughs> and I mean, hey, y'all, I'm good. I don't have that much debt. So, yeah, I could still have the million dollars and be good. Yeah. I'll take the million dollars. You take the million dollars? Mm-hmm. Nah. I guess eight fifty credit score would get me a quicker opportunity to make the million dollars, but you know, that taking that time to build it is all about patience. So I don't Listen, know. The minute them creditors get all that money for me, that score will jump. I'll be good. <laughs> I think it'll take about six months for it to be substantial. I got patience. <laughs> 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 yeah. I got, I got, I got six months. I guess depending on what I got going on, if I'm, you know, trying to lease a certain building or something like that or get a certain loan, I guess 850 right now would be cool. But other than that, I'll take the million too. I have to take the million. It will pay, it will boost my score because I will pay the debt. <laughs> I think I'm, I can be disciplined to pay my debt, stack the money to the side, do what I need to do. I still be working because listen, people always talk about when you retire, when you retire. Girl, I'm be bumping and curling <laughs> <laughs> from the wheelchairs. <laughs> wow. You you gonna have everybody scooting down. Look. Look. <laughs> oh no, you you probably get a wheelchair that'll elevate you. <laughs> hey, listen, idea. <laughs> Look, I listen. I I can't. Mm-mm. It's it's a lifestyle. This hair is it's a lot. I love the the lifestyle. I I took Patrick to his, a hair show uh, uh, some years ago when he was my apprentice, mm-hmm. and he was just amazed. I wasn't amazed because uh, I mean this is my life. Yeah, but he was like. Looking all over the place. Oh my gosh, did you see that? Yeah, they were here last year. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So this is your first. This is my 37th. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's, I love hair. I don't, hmm. Something I've tried to think about going back to school. I, some of the ideas I had was, 
going back to school, getting my degree, becoming an accountant. Uh, the flip side of that was becoming an accountant and doing people that's in business taxes because so many of us do not file our taxes. The IRS ain't bad. Mm-hmm. They cool peeps. Hey, you owe me 10 grand. How much you want to pay per month? Can you rephrase that question? <laughs> <laughs> how much do you want? Literally, this is, this is how they talk to you. How much do you want to pay comfortably a month? Um, the first time, the first time I called and had to do that, I was like, um, a hundred dollars. They're like, you, you gonna, you good with a hundred dollars a month? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You know, it can be, you sure? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm thinking, you, you say a number. <laughs> See, I, I, can <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself yeah. like 20 <laughs> <laughs> like will you take 20 a month <laughs> it's going to take a few years but I got you I got you I might be able to pay that 20 every week wow. and still equal 100 you know uh-huh. um, but I, I wanted I, at a point I wanted to um, didn't know how it was going to be received so I let it stop me in my tracks and um, I just wanted to just teach people, man, especially now, because I, I checked in with some stylists. I checked in with some barbers. Um, one of the owners um, from my first shop, he called me to see how it was going. And he, he said to me, he was like, I know you good. I know you good. You always been smart, you know, with your business. But um, some people don't um, don't pay their taxes. They make all their money under the table. Mm-hmm. Um, you're living off the state. You're, you know, <sighs> listen, use these things as stepping stones. If you need to go get food stamps, get your food stamps, go to the wolf, buy the damn crab legs. I don't know. Use it as a stepping stone, but stop using it as a lifestyle. You got to come up off these things. They are they are here for us to keep us down. You have to come off of it. Uh, my aunt was, um, who's, who tried to start a business and they were collecting money. And because they were collecting money and they were in the system, you know, um, the cash assistance or whatever, mm-hmm. or I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, they threatened to take it away from her. Um, because she was making, you know, the little, and listen, big brother watching. They might think you're making your money on the table. They watching. Um, so the threat was they were going to take her benefits away. And well, it's not designed for us to thrive. We got it. It's, it's, it's a stepping stone. Um, get it, use it, and just rid yourself of it. You don't need it forever. You want to be, I don't want to have to go certify for damn welfare every damn year. Those people are evil. (laughs) 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 They treat you like pure trash. I had, you know, I, 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 I paid my own insurance since I was 19, my medical insurance. And when I was pregnant with my daughter, you know, my girlfriends would tell me, um, you know, hey, you know, you can go get medical assistance and all of this. I'm like, nah, girl, nah, nah, nah. You know, I don't want to dabble in that and everything. I'll keep paying, you know. And I did have a thought like, dang, what happens if I have to go on bed rest and I can't pay my premium, you know? And it was high. It was like five, five twenty-five a month for me and my husband. And um, I, I, my, my one girlfriend was like, no. Go ahead. You sh- you should really do it. And they ended up giving it to us. Um, and so I didn't have to pay anything to have my daughter. You know, I didn't have the big medical bill. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't abuse that. I, I, you know, I went to certify one time after I had her because I had to. Um, they needed to see me and they treated me like pure trash. I'm thinking to myself, 
I make more than you. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> you lucky I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely make more than you. I definitely, you know, what's the deal? And um, I, even with even with the wick, I, I went and got wick because it all comes wrapped up in the bow in the package. Mm-hmm. And I never I went I usually go and get the wick, you know, the milk and stuff. Um, well, her form, you know, Brooklyn's formula. I go and get it early in the morning because I don't want to be anybody's way. I used to work in the grocery store. I know when no when the wick. Girls come in. It's like, Lord, here they come with the check. So you gotta write the check. They got to sign the check. You gotta inspect the check. You gotta who's the proxy, and it's a mess. So I get it. So I, I stay out the way. So I will go early in the morning, as soon as they open at six o'clock, and you know, get you know her stuff. And I've had two incidents at the grocery store, and one at the Wick office where I was just shamed. I guess you know. The lady was like, I, I, I went to the register and I said, Hey, I need, um, some a lot sensitive, whatever. And she was like, we don't do that. It's too early in the morning for that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we don't, she's like, we don't service wick early in the, we don't service wick at this time. I'm like, Oh, I didn't see that on the door. I wasn't being smart. Mm-hmm. I was just saying it didn't say wick hours on the door. No boy. <laughs> It said y'all open at six. So I had just left the WIC office the day before and it was so much going on because the two incidents happened together. Mm-hmm. Um I it was so much going on in the WIC office, I didn't sign the WIC check at the WIC office. Big deal. Mm-hmm. So I get to the store and when she finally allows me, like she's doing me a favor. Getting me the allowing me to get milk for my child, she says, You didn't sign your check. I, how, how am I supposed to know this is real? How am I supposed to know you ain't fraudulent? Da, 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 da. You need to go back down to the WIC office and sign the check in front of them. I'm like, Are you serious? Listen, listen, We're, really. And so I just felt so small. So I, I just left everything there. I walked to the door and she must have had a light bulb pop off in her little small head. And she was like, well, come on. I'm going to do it this time, but don't come back with this. Make sure your stuff is signed. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that didn't come out your mouth first. Listen, it, listen. One thing. <laughs> This milk for your child. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep my mouth zipped today. <laughs> but trust me, my corporate court. Hello, sir, ma'am. I was in your store today. And I experienced um, your cashier, Nicole. Um, let me tell you what happened. I Listen, before I'm done, I'm going to own somebody's store. Mm. <laughs> Um, so I, I called and made a, a formal complaint on her because I mean I felt so small. But then the incident leading up to it is like my last time getting my last month getting with. And I'm in the wig place, packed, you know, and I'm I'm fortunate. I got a car, I can drive the car to the wick. I'm not on the bus with the stroller and the this and the that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm unfortunate in that way. I don't have to do that. So I'm there. And I'm, I'm getting, you know, the last checks. And so on Brooklyn's vouchers, it said for Similac sensitive, not the regular blue can. And, um, I, I get the check and I read over the checks and it says regular advanced, mm-hmm. Similac advanced, the blue can. And so as I walk back in, I said, Hey, it was a guy that I never had to deal with because I always deal with a particular lady. And he said, I said, Hey, um, the check doesn't say similar like sensitive, like it has to be very specific when I go to the store or they're not going to honor it. And he was like, well, how do you know she's going to need sensitive? I said, well, she's been on sensitive the whole time. You know, she, you know, she's about to be one at this point and coming off of sensitive, uh, coming off of similar. So it's like one more month of her on this milk. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, well, how do you know that you need to go to your doctor's office and go get a note? Word. Go to my doctor's office. I'm in Chevrolet. 
You want me to drive to Greenbelt and set up an appointment with her doctor that I won't see her for like maybe a week or two to get said note to come back here to feed my child? Oh, okay. So I slid him the checks and said, I'm good, sir. You can have these checks. And I left. And I did that because I felt like I'm fortunate to be able to jump, get my baby, put her in this stroller, roll this stroller to my little cushy car in the garage and take her and go buy her some milk. Or if I needed to really have that doctor's note, I could go drive her to that doctor's office and get that note. Those moms in there have multiple children. They hanging off the mom's leg, arm, neck, head, in strollers, and they on the bus. If they would have said that to any of those moms, do you know how much they would have to go through just to get milk for their child? Just the, the milk for that child because you said, I want your child to, you don't want to do your job and put what's supposed to be on the check for them. So I got to, they got to do all this work. So I, here you go, sir. I'm good. This the last bunch anyway. I'm, I'm good. And I rolled out. I used the last piece, the because you know, they give them all to you together. Mm -hmm. I used the last week that I had. And that was, I'm done with it. I'm done. No. If that's how you want to live your life as an adult, parent, mother, father, having people dictate what they can do for you or your child, then by all means, knock yourself out. But please find your way out of it. Because that right there was ridiculous. I should have never had... I just I, it, that, that sat with me for weeks. I kept thinking about all the women I saw at the bus stop. And I'm like... You just gonna give they and I, 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 I can tell you this ain't if they if that's what they had to do they didn't go to no doctor they just was like look little Jesse James gonna get this Similac advance today it's gonna screw up their stomach because I don't have time in the way with all the hell I don't even got money to get on the bus to go to the doctor's office that, that was just rude man and so I tell anybody work your ass off fingers to the bone. Get yourself off of that stuff. And for for me, I only needed the um the health insurance that I only utilized the health insurance. Um, we didn't get anything else, and I just used it as a stepping stone. Um, I pay taxes. I pay a lot of taxes. So hell, health insurance was at least they could have gave me. <laughs> <laughs> no bull. <laughs> But you're not going to belittle me. You're not going to make me feel small. I I know what I'm out here doing. I'm out here working. Um, but it is not to knock anybody. But please, man, please don't let this, this government funding dictate your lifestyle. It's, it's so much more out here that you can have. You don't have to just be like, you know, a, a check on the box. So, yeah, that's my spiel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, people have become so dependent on someone else taking care of them that they don't even realize that they don't even have principles no more. So, I mean, kudos to you. You obviously weren't a person that, you know, always relied on someone else to take care of you or give you a handout. So, like I said, a lot of people can learn from you and. Uh, I hope that when they go back and they listen to this, they they get something more from it than a laugh. You know, there's a lot of gems, I think, that you dropped. So, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing you, um, you know, drop more information like this via social media because stuff like this needs to go viral and not just, you know, ridiculousness. But this has been dope. I, I learned a lot. I laughed a lot. And, um, you know, I look forward to having another conversation with you via podcast again. Do you have a story for me? A story? <laughs> I, I, have to, I, have to, I have to pay my time for story. <laughs> I 
Um, I don't. I don't have a new one, which which should be a good thing. I can. I can tell you this though. Um, I uh, how I got my new job. Yeah. So um, so you 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 work for people in the past before, right? So before you became independent and worked out there, I got to a point where. My boss started talking to me like, like he was running some type of cartel or something. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, make sure you, uh, make sure you had this done by the time I get back type shit. Like he wanted to slap me on my cheek and like his name was Vinny or some shit. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. after I, I, I realized what he was saying and I had already hung up the phone, I was just like, you know, I can't let this bitch talk to me like, this. like that's, that's just, that's just who I am. So. Um, I had to tell him, "Hey, hey, Alex. Um, when the next time you coming in the office? Because he was he was working safely from home, you know." And I said, "Uh, he was like, uh, I don't know." I said, like, "Well, next time you do, uh, we need to have a conversation." He's like, "What's that about?" Oh, I'd rather tell you see him in your face, you know. He didn't show up for two weeks. He thought I forgot. So, in the midst of all of that, it was like, I, I know what's up. So. I was planning my, you know, exit strategy right then and there. Mm-hmm. So I was taking off work. Yeah, <laughs> not feeling good. I'm going on interviews. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm using my vacation time to do interviews via Zoom. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got my new job. So um, when I used up my last vacation day, it was uh, it was a Thursday and a Friday. When I came back that Monday, I put in my two weeks notice and I set it up perfect. So I won't miss a check when I get to my new job. Mm-hmm. And that's how you got to do it, because I decided seven years ago that working for somebody else isn't what's up. Yeah. And right now I'm in a position where my nine to five job. It's paying my bills, but this podcast is the career that I want to build on and I'm going to stand on and, you know, and, and exactly. So Land Over Legend Studios, that's my future. You know what I'm saying? And I'm using my simple and plain clothing line to help fund that. I'm, uh, I'm also, you know, working with certain vendors on trying to get this pop up shop thing going and, you know, talking to business owners like you to help me you know, instill the principles and, the you know, the qualities I need to be successful and do things the right way. So that way, if a pandemic ever hits again, I won't be in the same condition I was this year or this past year, I should say. So, yeah. So, yeah. So hopefully nothing bad happens to me in the future. But if it does, you'll be the first one to know about it. Please. Immediately. So, uh, we're going to do the sign offs now. I want you to let the people know where they can uh, find you at. So, you can find me in Crompton. I am right across the street from the Blue Dolphin. I know all of y'all know where it's at. Um, TrueVisionHairStudio.com. Every word spelled correctly. And um, the number is 202. 415 hair. Um, and I'm on Instagram and Facebook um, under True Vision Hair Studio. Yeah, so y'all make sure y'all look her up and, you know, make those appointments because she replies at 3, 4 in the morning. She's she's <laughs> like, up. Yeah, there's testimonials on the site. It's like, you know, I was on the, I just happened to be up at three o'clock in the morning and I, and I hit uh, frequently asked questions and I got an email back <laughs> and I was like, oh, she, she ain't lying. I'll see you in 45 minutes. Don't be late. <laughs> so y'all make sure y'all check her out. Lydia Patrick, uh, true entrepreneur, um, great mom great uh sister great individual with a uh, mainstream if you piss her off 
But I am your host, the Land of a Legend, a.k.a. Big T. And this is another episode of the I Can't Make This Up podcast. I can't, with a K, make this up podcast. You can find me everywhere on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, you can also find me everywhere podcasts are available. So don't forget to follow, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I take all criticisms to the heart. So please be nice or you'll get invited to 